I recently did a video going over what a UV, ND, NDPL and CPL filler was, what it meant, how it worked and comparison examples for the DJI Mini 3 Pro and you guys gave me great feedback on it. If you haven't seen that video I'll put a link in the description down below. Well today I have even more acronyms and filters to take a look at including a GND, FX Golden Blue, VND X Mist and Long Exposure. What do these acronyms mean? What do they do? When should you use them? And how do they work? Let's find out and jump right in. Now before we get in and take a look at the first filter, I just want to say a big thanks to Freewell. They have sent out all the filters you will see in today's video, and these are for the DJI Mini 3 Pro, but Freewell make most of these filters for all the other drones, so if you want an Air 2S, Mini 2, Mavic 3, you'll be able to get the filters for them drones. If at any time during this video you want to pick up a set, I will put links in the description down below to all of them. So first we have GND filters. Now GND stands for Graduated Neutral Density Filter. In the last video we learned what an ND filter was. In simple terms, an ND filter is a dark piece of glass which reduces the light that hits your camera sensor and this allows you to run lower shutter speeds and achieve motion blur. That's it summed up. But if you want to know more about ND filters in more detail, I recommend watching my ND, NDPL, UV and CPL explanation video and I'll put a link to that in the description down below. A graduated ND filter like the ones we have here fade from a clear or transparent piece of glass at the bottom with no light reduction effects to a darker piece of glass at the top with some light reduction effects. So the top of your image will be darker whereas the bottom of your image will have no change in appearance. The difference between a GND and ND filter is a GND filter will only darken part of your image whereas an ND filter will darken the entire image. So why would we use a GND filter? Well GND filters are really good for landscape photography. They allow us to photograph sky and foreground with a single exposure even if the range of light is pretty broad. So if you've ever tried to photograph a really bright sky with your drone, maybe it's a really sunny beautiful day or maybe you're trying to capture a beautiful orange vivid bright sunset, you'll have encountered a scenario where you have to make a compromise. Usually there's one of two things you have to do. Either you expose for the sky correctly so that you get all the detail in your sky, but that means that your foreground or ground is darker than you'd really want it to be. And in editing or post, you have to bring your shadows up to brighten that foreground or ground back up. That's because you've exposed for the bright sky and everything else has become underexposed. Or you'll take two photos. You'll take one photo exposed for the sky where the ground and foreground is quite dark. And then you'll take another photo where you expose for the ground or foreground. So that is perfectly exposed, but the sky is way too bright. And then you'll stitch the two photos together in post. Well, the benefits of a GND filter is because as it goes towards the top of the filter, it fades to darker piece of glass. It means you can expose correctly for that ground or foreground and that bright sky all in one photo. So if you take a look at this example with no filter attached, you can see with the image exposed for the sky, the ground is dark and a lot of the detail is missing. But then if I expose the image for the ground, you can see that the sky becomes overexposed, blown out and white. But now if we put a GND filter on, you can see that we can expose for the ground and the sky at the same time and the entire image looks properly exposed, ending up with a better looking image. Now you can use these GND filters if you're taking a photo or video in horizontal or vertical mode, but you have to make an adjustment. On the GND filter there is a red dial and you'll see a little H and V icon. Whenever you are recording in horizontal mode, that's the standard mode, you want the white line on the red dial to be pointing towards the H, H for horizontal. If you want to record in vertical mode or take a photo in vertical mode, then you want to turn that dial until the white line lines up with a V for vertical mode. And then the GND, that gradient from clear to darker glass will be in the right orientation for vertical mode. Next up we have FX filters. Now FX, as you may have guessed, stands for effects. These are the FX gold and the FX blue. And these will give you a creative style that emulates anamorphic lens flares. If you've ever watched a movie and seen horizontal streaking light that comes from cars or street lights, like in these examples, this is what these filters replicate. Both these filters have thin lines across the surface and when light hits these, you will get a lens flare. You can change the angle of the lens flare by rotating the red dial on the filters. And you can also change the color of the lens flare by using the two different filters. The FX Gold will give you a warm gold flare and the FX Blue will give you a colder blue flare that's also sometimes white. 
and the color of these flares is dictated by the streaks within the filler itself. Now all you need for these to work is simply a strong light source in your video or photo. So here's an example of me walking around with a torch and no filter. As you can see, there's no streaking coming from the end of the torch. And then here I am walking around again with a torch and one of the FX filters attached. See how the lens flare appears around the light source for this really creative look. Let's now take a look at VND X Mist filters. And we'll start with the first part of that acronym, which is variable ND or variable neutral density. What this means is you can adjust the darkness or lightness off the filter while it's still attached to your drone. Normally with ND filters, if you want to increase or decrease the light reduction effects, you have to swap the filter out for a darker or lighter filter. But with a variable ND, you can adjust the red dial on the filter and this will adjust the lightness or darkness off the filter itself. Now these VND X Mist filters also have hard stops. And what that means is the red dial will not just keep turning forever. When you get to the lightest or darkest ND setting, the dial will be unable to turn any further. Now a lower variable ND has different strengths of light reduction. There's still a limit to how many stops each one can have. And so in this case, we have two different filters. The first one has two to five stops, which is equivalent to an ND4 to ND32. And the other has six to nine stops, which is equivalent to ND64 to ND512. So that's the VND part of the acronym, but these are VND X mist filters. So what does mist mean and what does it do? To put it simply, a mist filter or the mist part of a VNDX mist will add a little bit of haze or glow to your image, specifically around bright light sources. It will make your highlights glow a little bit more than normal and it will also slightly lower contrast. So again, this is a creative look that can make your image seem softer. So the VNDX mist filters combine the light reduction effects of an ND filter with the convenience of having multiple strengths of ND filter in one so you don't have to change it out every time you can just adjust the red dial along with the creative hazy glowing highlight look provided by a mist filter all in one. Let's now take a look at long exposure filters. So ND filters are created in stops. To keep it simple, the larger the number after the ND filter, the more light reduction effect it's gonna have, the darker the piece of glass and the darker your image will be when you put it on. Generally speaking, even on the brightest of days, a ND128 is the max you're going to use. So why would we need an ND256, ND512, ND1000, or even an ND2000? Well, we use these for long exposure photography. To explain what long exposure photography is, let's take a look at two examples. In this first photo, we used a high shutter speed, around one over 100, and that has frozen the motion in time, giving us water that looks like it's standing still and a really sharp image. Then let's take a look at this second photo and you can see we have this cool motion blur effect that captures the motion of the water trailing and gives it this smooth dreamy appearance while other parts of the image that weren't moving still appear sharp. The reason for this is we used a slow shutter speed, around one second. Having the sensor exposed for that long captures all the motion that happened within that time and gives us this really nice motion blur tracing effect. Now the downside to having the sensor exposed for that long means it's capturing light the entire time. So if you try to do long exposure photography in the daytime with no filter, what you'll find is the image is completely blown out and overexposed. For this reason, when we're using very low shutter speeds for long exposure photography, we need a really high strength ND filter. So you're going to be using ND1000, ND2000, and that's gonna darken the image enough so that you can have your sensor exposed for that long to get them really nice motion blur long exposure photos. So very quickly, I just wanted to go through each of the sets that Freewell have sent me and explain what's included within them. And we'll start with the Landscape Series 2 pack. This Landscape Series 2 pack includes two GND or graduated knit Real density filters and you get a GND 0.9 and a GND 1.2. These, as with all the Freewell filters, have a dust-proof, scratch-resistant, oil-proof, and color-neutral coating. Then we have the FX Series 2 pack, and this is the pack that's gonna give you them light streaks, them lens flares on your light sources when you have them attached. You get an FX Gold, which is what's gonna give you that warm, gold-looking light streak on your light sources, and you have an FX Blue, which is gonna give you a blue or white streak on your light sources and you can use these to get really creative looking images. Then we have the hard stop VND X Mist 
two pack. This comes with two filters and these are your variable neutral density and the mist filters which give you that hazy glowy effect while reducing the light coming into your camera sensor. You get a two to five stop with the first one which is equivalent to ND4 to ND32 and then the second filter is a six to nine stop which is equivalent to ND64 to ND512. This will cover you for even the brightest days and the nice thing we're using these is you won't be taking filters on and off your drone all the time. You can just adjust the dial on them. Then we have a long exposure four pack. This comes with an ND128, ND256, ND512 and ND2000. And this is what you're going to use to reduce the light so much to your camera sensor that you can use them really low shutter speeds and get really beautiful long exposure photos. If you want to capture them really dreamy looking river streams or car tail lights trailing along a road, then this is the pack you want to pick up to be able to do that long exposure photography. So again, a big thanks to Freewell for sending all these packs out. And if if you want to pick any of them up there's links in the description down below. So there you have it and now hopefully you understand even more about all the different types of filters you can get for the DJI Mini 3 Pro. If you've liked this video and you've learned something new please let me know by giving me a thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you want to know how to take better photos and more cinematic videos with your drone then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. Make sure to click the subscribe button and make sure the notification bell's on so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. If you want to stick around to see a few more of them videos now, here's a few I personally recommend checking out. I'll not keep you back any further, thank you so much for watching, I'll catch you over there.